Hi, hi. Hi, it's Sue Carney, Magnolias West. Hi, happy Friday. Happy Friday afternoon. I'm gonna try and talk as fast as I can so while my voice holds out. I've been sick with the cold for over a week now, and I'm happy to have a voice at all. Um, how's your week been going? Okay, no, no more idle chatter. Okay, down to business. Um, talking about resilience for good business reasons. The Reclaim Resilience Summer 18 group is starting in June and I'll put some links down below. But it's, you know, it's a word that I use a lot now. My favorite hashtag is Reclaim Resilience. The program is called Reclaim Resilience. It's, it's so it can start to even feel overused for me and I like the fact that I can, we can, you can look at resiliency in, from so many different angles. Today I was thinking about when I first moved to California from Brooklyn, I moved to, I rented a house in the, in, in Sacramento in the, outside the downtown area, like 15 minutes from downtown. And I had a backyard, I had a backyard. Oh my God, it was a bit, I remember now how huge it was for me. And after a year, I bought a house. I bought a house for the first time in my life. I am back to being a renter now, but I was a homeowner for a few years. And I had a, another yard and I, I love succulents. I love succulents because they're hardy. They don't take much. They don't need a lot of coddling. They're the kind of living thing that I would try over and over again, year after year to grow when I lived in New York City. A little tiny jade tree in a little three inch pot and I would, it would shrivel up and die from too much water. I didn't know. So when I moved to California, I started growing succulents outside um, I never became much of an indoor plant woman. Actually, I still am not, but I love growing plants outdoors and have evolved a, somewhat, a little bit. I'm still pretty brutal as a gardener, but I, I started putting succulents outside in pots and then I got kind of brave and I put them in the dirt. And I would grow, I, I felt like I became an aloe farmer and a jade farmer because they just took off. And I had them lining my fence, jades and aloes and um, pretty run of the mill succulents. Hi, let me know who you are. Um, and uh, people would say to me, oh, you grow succulents outdoors, how wonderful, do you cover, the, cover them over? in the in the winter time to protect them from a freeze or do you shade them in the summer to protect them from the heat and my instinctive response was always no i don't do that i grow succulents because they're hardy and they're tough and because i don't think anyone's going out into the desert and covering these plants that retain water in their fleshy bodies with blankets in the winter or shading them in the summertime. So I didn't, um, I fed them and I watered them, but I pretty much left them to their own devices. And over time I saw that sometimes in the winter, um, leaves would break off and there would be scars on the trunk or on the body of the succulent, or even some of the leaves would get scarred. And in the summertime, they'd get really pale sometimes and leggy from too much sun and then they'd kind of normalize again in the milder seasons so i had these i had my my aloe and, and jade farm of plants that looked like they had been through life and they were they were resilient they could recover from extreme temperatures they could recover from too much water or not enough and of course they didn't all recover and it wasn't a permanent thing but I got to see just like you see when a when a, a tree bends in a in a really big wind you see that resilience you see that ability to bend 
even to crack, even to break. But there's, there's, there's often a lot of life left between the bending and the breaking and the cracking and the death. Not to say that death is not also, I'm not gonna go there, like start talking about whether death is part of, of resiliency or not, because if death is part of life and life is part of the resilience of creation, then probably there's nothing even to think about, nothing to worry about at the terminus. But let, let's talk about the part we're in, the living part because I'm still here and you're still here and we're we're hanging out together on a Friday afternoon. Um, that tough but tenderness, the continuing to bend in the face of circumstances and challenges that may make you feel like uh, there's no more bend left, that's resilience. And to be able to do that without toughening up to the point where you're not letting your beautiful heart shine, your beautiful light shine in the world. That's not the point. I, and, and I'm just going to quote Viola Davis. I happened to see this interview Brene Brown did with Viola Davis. And I can put that link in the comments for you as well because it's pretty awesome. Viola said... They tell you, they tell you to develop a thick skin so things don't get to you. What they don't tell you is that your thick skin will keep everything from getting out as well. Love, intimacy, vulnerability. I don't want that. Thick skin doesn't work anymore. I want to be transparent and translucent. And for that to work, she said, I won't own other people's shortcomings and criticisms. I won't, won't put what you say about me on my load. That's really important. What's also really important is to own my own, I'm not quoting Viola anymore, I'm quoting myself. What's really, what I also think is also really important is to own my own shortcomings and criticisms and keep showing up anyway, transparently, vulnerably, with love, day in and day out, no matter how hard. I have stepped into something that I've never done before. I started a fundraiser, and I have feelings about that. I have feelings that make me really uncomfortable to ask for people, anyone, for you, anybody to help me out. But the fact is that it makes good sense to... Um, get really upfront about my work in the world and that I'm not earning enough money to get me, to keep me going, especially not earning enough money to get me through this transition of having to replace my now unreliable wheels. I've had this car its whole life. I've driven it for 157,000 miles and it's no longer trustworthy. It's breaking down and needs to be released and I'm looking to get a reliable and safe vehicle. And um, I have put together a fundraiser to do that. I have received, um, oh my gosh, this week I think I've received something like $1,350 in donations, which is really helpful because I want to be able to just take as much cash as I can amass and, and um, hopefully not have to finance my new used car. So, well, I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm in the mystery. I'm doing the, the scary, big, vulnerable things. I'm revealing my, my, transparently revealing that this is hard for me. I'm mucking about and muddling along, and I'm sure I'm doing everything maybe wrong, maybe right, I don't know, it doesn't matter. It's the doing that matters. It's the showing up, it's being here with you, it's being able to connect. And do my work in the world and invite you to join me and my beloved friend and colleague Sharon Rosen when we offer the summer's 
Reclaim Resilience group. So, um, yeah, I'm here to, to mentor, to be mentored, to support, to walk with, to talk with, to point at, to settle down, and to help you do all of the same. And um, I'm, I'd love to talk with you. Let me know if you have any questions. Blessed be, have a, have a weekend. Have a weekend. Take some time this weekend to nourish yourself, to let go of your tight grip on your to-do list and follow your heart, at least for part of the time. Thanks. Blessed be.